Since this one I've already covered, I will be starting with it. The White Death. The White Death is a creepy story about a vengeful spirit in Mexico who hunts down anyone who knows about her existence. I'm currently sitting in front of my computer, scared witless. Every moment could be my last. My friend is here with me and he is the sole reason why my life is in danger. It may not make sense at first, but let me explain. It all started earlier today when a friend of mine burst into my house and slammed the door behind him. His eyes were wide with fear and he stood there with his back against the door, breathing heavily. I asked him what had happened and he told me this story. He had been living with his aunt for the past year because his parents were in Mexico. They were doing mission work at a small hospital in southern Mexico. The previous night, a bed-raggled man had stumbled through the entrance of the hospital. He was screaming in Spanish and appeared to be out of his mind with terror. They brought him over to a chair and let him sit down. As he caught his breath, he told his story in broken English. He claimed that his sister had been killed by something he referred to as La Murito Blanco. He kept saying that it was coming for him next. Fused as they asked him who or what the Murito Blanco was, with a look of unfathomable fear on his face, he said that La Murito Blanco was the White Death. She is the soul of a girl who died years ago. She died by her own hand, he said, alone and unloved. She hated life so much that she wanted to remove all traces of herself from the earth. So great was her desire to completely obliterate her memory that she returned from the dead as a vengeful spirit bent on killing all those who knew of her existence. She is a girl, but not a girl, he said. She's not dead, but not really alive. She has cold black eyes that weep blood. She walks without ever actually seeming to move an inch. She stalks her victims like a wild animal, pursuing them across rivers and valleys, trailing them back to their homes. You are never really aware that she is following you until you hear her telltale knock upon your door. She knocks once for your skin, which she'll use to patch her own decaying flesh, twice for your hair, which she'll gnash between her teeth, three times for your bones, which she'll fashion into clubs, four times for your heart, which she'll tear out of your chest, five times for your teeth, which she'll polish and keep in the box, six times for your eyes, which she'll pluck out one by one, seven times for your soul, which she'll swallow whole. No matter where you go, the white death will track you down and you will hear her terrible knocking begin on the door. You can try to outrun her, but she's faster than any mortal man. If you flee from your home while she's knocking on your door, she will follow you wherever you go. The terrified man was certain that this thing had killed his sister. He had tried to tell the police about the white death, but they would not listen, dismissing it as an old wives' tale. Next, he had tried to tell his priest, but the priest immediately shut the door of the church in his face and turned him away. The priest had seen the white death following him, he said, and did not want to get involved. With his head in his hands, a frightened man said that the white death follows you forever until you tell someone else about it. Then it strikes, it kills you, and begins following the person you told. After finishing his tale, the man stole a car from the mission hospital parking lot and vanished into the night. Apparently, my friend's mother and father had immediately called his aunt and told her about the strange man they had encountered. They asked her if she had ever heard of the white death. She said she had not, and they proceeded to tell her a story that the man had told them. The aunt got a phone call later that night. It was the Mexican police. They told her that the parents had been found dead outside the hospital. They had been torn apart. My friend's aunt had immediately called him at school to break the bad news to him. As he cried, she told him she couldn't understand what had happened. She recounted the whole story to him, telling him about the strange man who had turned up in the hospital just hours before his parents were found dead. She told him how the man had given his parents a weird and disturbing story about something called the White Death. When he hung up the phone, he had struggled to come to terms with what had happened. It almost didn't seem real to him. When he got home after school, he found the front door of his aunt's house standing open. Inside was a trail of blood, leading into the kitchen. There on the kitchen floor, he found his aunt's dead body. She had been torn limb from limb. He ran out of the house and all the way across town, never looking back until he reached my house. As he told me this story, I could hardly believe it. Within the space of a day, his mother, his father, and his aunt had been murdered. It all seemed too far-fetched. But before I could utter a word, my friend and I both recoiled in horror as we heard a knocking begin at my front door. We've been staring at the front door for an hour now, and neither of us wanted to open it. The knocking is still going on, growing louder and louder. She never gives up. She never quits. La Marito Blanco is unstoppable. I think she wants to scare us, my friend and I. I think she wants us to blame each other, and I do. I blame my friend. It's all his fault. He should never have told about her. As I sit here in my house beside my friend, both of us listening to that hideous knocking growing ever louder, I wish a lot of things. I wish she had killed my friend before he reached my house. If he had never been able to tell me about her, I wouldn't be in danger now. I'm sorry I ever met him, and I'm sorry for you too. I'm sorry I made you read this story, or hear this story. I'm sorry I ever told you about the white death because now that you know about her she'll be coming for you next that was the story of the white death which i've told twice now now moving on to other mexican urban legends that i haven't told you before la bruja la bruja is a creepy pasta story about a mexican witch who kidnaps children my mother told me this story once and my grandmother told me that she lived through it in the early 1960s there was a small town in mexico where a lot of babies just happened to be born around the same time it's said that there was a woman who hunted the town she was not just a ghost she was one of the 200 people that lived in the town at the time. People say that she was a witch, a worshipper of the devil, and many people said that she would go out into the fields in the middle of the night when everyone was asleep. Some local farmers claimed that they would see her whenever they would go outside to check on their animals because their animals would make 
make a lot of noise whenever she passed by. They could never tell who it was because it was always pitch black and they couldn't see a thing. It was a poor town with a couple of streetlights. People weren't so worried about her for a while because they saw that she did no harm to them until something terrible happened. One night, a married couple slept with their baby between them. They were so poor that they couldn't afford a mattress and had a carpet as their bed. The parents did not sleep too close to their baby because they were afraid that they would accidentally roll over and hurt their child. The mother and father were deep into their sleep until the mother heard the baby cry terribly. It shrieked a blood curling scream loud enough to wake up my grandmother and grandfather who lived next to them. The baby cried and the mother woke up and tried to put him back to sleep. Whenever she went to sleep again, she heard the baby cry once more. She woke up again and did the same as before. This went on for about two more times. The mother became angry and impatient with her baby because she was really tired. The father was asleep and would not wake up no matter how many times his baby cried. The fifth time that the baby cried, his mother ignored it. The baby cried for another couple of minutes. The mother continued to ignore her baby until she subconsciously heard someone walking outside. She heard the door squeak open slowly, then it shut loudly. The door was made of thick metal, so the loud sound terrified her and finally woke her and her husband up as well. When she looked for her baby, she saw that he was quiet and thought that he was sleeping. The mother asked her husband why he wouldn't wake up for he said that he never heard anything. When the mother went to hold her baby, she saw that he was cold. She kissed her baby to try and wake him up, but he wouldn't. The baby was dead. When she took off his blanket, she saw that his stomach and arms had scratch marks. Someone was hurting her child while he was sleeping. Then her husband cried, La Bruja, La Bruja, Lo Mato, Mato, e Mil Hijo. The witch, the witch killed him. She killed my son. The mother swore that she heard a woman giggling. After that, many parents held their children close to them whenever they slept. Sometimes children would cry in the middle of the night out of nowhere and their mothers would begin to pray. The children who could speak said that they would feel someone grabbing them, the witch would leave after. It wasn't until years later that two children died, a brother and a sister, except it was in a river in the town. One man swore that he saw a woman pushing the boy and girl's head into the water and laughing when she did so. He yelled at her to leave them alone and ran to stop her. She kept laughing at him and was singing as he ran towards her, but when he almost reached her, she was gone, and the boy and girl's bodies were floating on the water. People began to suspect women who could be the witch, but coincidentally, many people left the town around that time to move to other places. She could have been one of them. La Mala Hora. La Mala Hora is a scary story in urban legend from the folklore of New Mexico. The name means the evil hour or the evil one. It is also known as La Malora, La Malorga, or the evil doer. La Mala Hora is said to be a wicked spirit or an evil demon that wanders the lonely country roads after midnight and terrorizes those who travel alone. It usually lurks in the darkness at a crossroad, waiting for an unwary traveler to cross its path. According to some, it is more feared than the devil. It first appears as a large black lump, constantly moving and changing shape. It can also change size rapidly, growing larger and smaller. They say it looks like a ghostly black shroud or a large black cotton ball. Anyone who's unfortunate enough to set eyes on this demon runs the risk of being driven insane. It tries to hypnotize and paralyze anyone who happens to encounter it at night. When it attacks, it suddenly rushes towards the unwary, envelops him, and suffocates him. The following morning, the poor rent is found dead at the side of the road. At other times, it transforms into a wicked woman, a female personification of evil. She appears wearing black black clothing, her lo hair long and unkempt. She is like a spirit or wind floating along without touching the ground with her feet. People in New Mexico say that she seldom appears in human form, but when she does, it is considered to be a death omen. If you encounter her at a crossroads, it usually means that you or somebody you know is going to die. When pressed for more detailed information about this demon, the people of New Mexico will refuse to talk about it and just reply, es cosa mala is an evil thing. In one story, there was a woman whose husband was away on business. One night, she decided to go to stay with her friend in Santa Fe. It was just after midnight when she left her house and drove down the lonely deserted highway. After a while, she approached a small crossroads when suddenly a dark shape appeared in front of her car. The woman screamed in fright and slammed on the brakes, screeching to a halt. When she looked up again, the dark shape had disappeared. For a second, the woman breathed a sigh of relief. Then she turned to her right and saw something that almost gave her a heart attack. Right beside her window, looking in at her, was a hideous old lady. She had the twisted face of a demon, glowing red eyes, and short pointed teeth. The demonic lady began falling at the window, trying to break glass. Terrified, the woman put her foot down on the accelerator and the car took off down the road. For a few terrible moments, the demonic lady ran alongside the car, still clawing at the window. Then the car sped up and she fell behind. The woman looked in her rear view mirror. And the last thing she saw was the demon growing taller and taller until it was as large as a tree. When the woman reached her friend's house, she ran inside and locked the door behind her. The woman explained what she had seen at the crossroads and her friend gasped in horror. It must have been La Mala Hora, said her friend, the evil one. They say she only appears at crossroads when someone is about to die. The woman was overcome by feeling a dread and impending doom. She couldn't sleep a wink that night. She waited until morning, then drove home. She made sure not to drive by this crossroads again, fearing that the demonic lady would appear once more. When the woman reached home, she found a police car waiting in her driveway. The officers approached her, asked her name, and broke the terrible news to her. Her husband
Hoffman has been mugged on the way back to his hotel the night before. He had been shot in the head and was killed instantly. It all happened just after midnight. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you.